So we haven't talked, of course, since the Iowa State game. We're now two games into the Big 12. West Virginia is obviously fresh on the mind, but to go back to Ames first, how proud were you of your guys to go to a building that, you know, they'd never won in before and play so well, really, for at least offensively, for 40 minutes? Right. It was a, it was a really good opportunity for us to, to go there and get one. Uh, you know, every time you go there, you still think Yang's going to show up yep. and, and get 20 and 10 <laughs> on you. But, um, you know, it was good. Our guys did a great job of moving the ball right. and with taking advantage of opportunities they gave us. And I think the biggest thing was that we really shot the ball well yep. there. And we shoot the ball like that. We can, we can we can pretty much, you know, play with anybody in the country. Yeah, I mean, the obvious storyline, of course, from that game is Dean. You know, I think he had 34 and 8. He was 13 and 16 from the floor. Uh, can a guy play much better than he did up there in Ames? Well, I mean, he, he still passed. He could, we, we were talking about him. Yeah. He could have 40. But yeah. he, he assisted a couple where he just like, man, he could, probably should have shot it as high right. as he was. But, you know, you, you like to see the progression of a player. You like to see him um, take shots that are tough. Yeah. When you're when you're hot and, you, you know, you, you have a wiggle room to, to shoot a couple bad ones. And, you know, he did the Jordan Rocker fadeaway. Yeah, that was always, that. Yep. you know, fun to watch him do because he does all the time in practice. And uh, I think he was just in a zone where yeah. where, where, where anything he threw up uh, was going to go in. And then another two more obvious guys to talk about, of course, Cam was, I think, at 23, 4 or 5 from 3. And in the first half, I mean, absolutely on fire. Um, you would have thought a confidence build for him going to West Virginia, but just looking to get Cam's game at Iowa State, had to be impressed with him too, I think. Yeah, 21 and a half is yeah. impressive for yeah. everybody. So, um you know, the thing with him, he did, despite having 21, he did so many good point guard things in the second half, which yeah. was, you know, as his evolution as a player, point guard, um, to know when to and when not to. I think that that bodes well for our future. And obviously, you know, the West Virginia game is one of those deals where we just look at it like he's had, you know, West Virginia and Tulsa, two, yeah. of, our, two of our three losses where he's played that way. And, yeah. You know, when you think about it, he is the head. And, and when he plays decent, Average and above, we, we have a really good chance to win the game. Right. Another guy, you know, really you go back to Washington State. Barry Brown, both in the Washington State game and then Iowa State, did a great job of getting to the basket both those games. Um, is that something that he's made a uh, you know, concerted effort to decide to do is really attack the hoop? Well, I think when you're not shooting the ball well from three, you gotta, you got to do something else along with you know, being told, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. repeatedly, you know, get in there. Uh, I think for him, uh, layups are good for him. Yeah. It, it drives him. And it gets him, uh, it just makes him a better defender. When he can get layups and, and play the way he plays, uh, it makes us hard to beat. Staying with Iowa State, I think Wainwright had 27 minutes off the bench and just did a bunch of things. No turnovers. I can't remember the entire line, but I think three boards, two blocks, a steal, made his only basket. Um, thought he played really well, it seemed like, at Iowa yeah, he State. He was tough defensively. Yeah. You know, when we, we, we got him on a 1 of 11 start in the second half, that was the key. You know, yeah. We had to buckle down and defend the right way. And, um, we, once we did that, the offensively, we still kept clicking, and a big part of that was Dean um, and Barry laying it up, and, and you know, guys were just playing hard, and that's where you got to be on the road. I have to joke about it. You ever seen a guy foul out faster than McCall Wayne did in, in Iowa State? Well, he's uh, <laughs> Mac is one of those dudes, man, where you just you don't know it's a mixed bag. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's like Cracker Jacks. You open it up, and you hope you get the you know, tattoo, and you get right. a little sticker. So right. he, he's he's that guy for us right now, still learning and trying to figure things out. I think people, myself included, were a little surprised to see James Love get on the floor in that game. Um, obviously, that means he's gotten quite a bit physically better. And right. only played a really brief amount of time, but was it big for him to finally get on the yeah, floor and play for K-State? It, it was good. You know, we, we should have played, probably should have played him in the West Virginia game. It's yeah. probably more significant in that one than, than that one. But yeah. I think he... You know, he's slowly coming along, and we don't want to have any setbacks. And I think that the important thing is to see where he's at and see him throw him in and then to come back the next day and, and be all right yeah. to practice again and not yeah. not be pain and not be limited in what you can do the next day. I think that's important for him. So he's slowly getting to where we think he could be an every-game every, every game player, and, and that's where we need him to be because he is big and physical. Right. So you beat Iowa State, you know, 91-75, come back, play West Virginia. You know, they're number six. Um, a frustrating loss for sure. We were talking, you know, before we started off, um, and you mentioned too. You know, Cam's kind of the head. He goes, he goes 0 for 10. Um, did a lot of other things good. I think he had five assists and or maybe six assists and only two turnovers. But if he makes three shots, you got to feel good about about winning that game. You would think. 
It was a disappointment because it was a great, tremendous crowd. And thank our fans for coming and showing it up. It was, yeah. And, 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 you know, student section filled with others. You know, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't yep. students. It was a rowdy group, and that's great. you got to yep. have that, uh, especially with the opening of, of the 12. You know, it's, it's one of those games you wish you could have back. Right. And watching film, and, and you know, there are going to be a lot of aha moments in film yeah. where they see stuff, and they're like, you know, it'll bode well for the next time we play them to see how they played us and see what they gave us, which was really easy to make the next play. And I think we, we did it because of how they are and how they're physical and, and tough. We, we just tried to be that way with them. Right. When we just got to be who we are. And we're we're offensive. We're a movement team. We're a pass and assisting team. And 13 assists, 15 turnovers is not good enough against them. 15 turnovers is great against right. them. And they had 18. We forced them into 18 turnovers. But, you know, our assists need to be higher than that. And, I, and, and when our guys watch and see what we missed and what we had, on penetrations and where the ball needed to go, you know they'll they'll be disappointed. Right, a couple guys who did play well. One obviously was Xavier Sneed. I he kind of struggled at Washington State and in the first half at Iowa State. And then I think he had nine in the second half against Iowa State and was really good yesterday. Yeah. He's had a pretty good stretch for the last you know game and a half for you guys. Well, he's, he's a good player. Yeah, and, and he's a he's a type of kid, and he's he's younger than so obviously he looks right. up to the. The older three, right? And he sees where he needs to go, and when he needs to pull back, and what he needs to do, which is hard for a kid who's that talented. Yeah. Knowing like I can go get mine, but yep. he really does a good job of deferring, but showing up big when we really need him to to, to be a big piece of of why we win. So, uh, you know, Xavier's going to going to continue to grow and develop, and, and you know those four. And you hate to always talk about the big four, but it's right. who we are right now. And uh, until we get somebody we consistently trust the other spot then that's that's how it's going to be but you know you can have team wins when other guys show up like Ahmad showed up and then you have Mac at Washington State you have Levi at Vanderbilt you have you have those type of, of show ups then you're going to have a chance to win you know we talked about Dean's game at Iowa State then he had another I thought really good game against West Virginia a different kind of game you know but gets 17 and 10 on only eight, only eight shots um we talk about him all the time and people will always <laughs> want more from him but he's having a heck of a year right yeah now. I mean he, yeah. You know, you want more. Like, and plus, if you watch practice, like you guys had, you 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 would more people would want even more because you right. see how good he really is. Right now, it's the it's a transfer of, of talent and development starting to show up in the games all the time for him, and that's good for us. When when he is you know, honestly, he's the top of the scoreboard guy. Like people are like really trying to stop him right. because he can dribble, he can pass, he can shoot it. You know, he can post up. You know, he's, he's efficient. So all those things, you know, and you, and you know where the ball's going. You know where you, where, who you got to stop. And he's still doing what he's doing as a credit to him. And, and he's going to continue to get better. I'm curious about a couple bigger picture coaching philosophy type things. And NFL is a totally different game, but I hear a lot about, about a lot of NFL coaches look at the schedule and break it into segments of four. Do you guys do anything like that with a long Big 12 season, or is it just one one game at a time all no, the we way? Do. We, we pre- constantly preach marathon, and we'll talk yeah. about brackets sometimes. Yeah. When you got a homestand. You know, you, you, those are the things that you can really talk about to motivate your kids because if you consistently talk to them about the end, right. then – they always are thinking about the end. I mean, it's a one-game approach, similar to Coach Snyder. We've adopted that since yeah. we got it. You have to have one because our season is way longer. And if you consistently think about four or five game, games down ahead of what the next four-game stretch is, that's brutal in our league. And you right. know that. You, like Absolutely. you just talked about, the ranked teams we got in the last five or six, next five or six games. Yep. They don't need to focus on it. They got we got to focus on Texas Tech. We can't focus on Oklahoma State or Kansas down the road. We we have to focus on. The approach of them being prepared and ready to go for the next opponent, and then and then go from there. Texas Tech, you know, the team that we talked about before we started, they've been really impressive. They've been at home all year, but they've been, they've taken care of business. Um, I remember being pretty shocked at the, the Baylor Texas Tech score when I first. I think at one point when I looked at it, it was you know 54 to 21 or something like that. And I know we just came off West Virginia yesterday, but what do you know about Texas Tech right now in that in that matchup? Well, they guys? play a ton of people. Yeah, I think do. that's yep. the biggest thing. And. Who you think is their best players? You know, it's amazing the two freshmen are playing really right. well for them. Obviously, Evans is he's the key. He's the yep. best player. But you know, Zach Smith and, and Gray, those dudes have been basically three or four year starters, and you think they have a bigger role. Right. But he's. I mean, they're playing 12, 13 consistently every single game. They're getting in. You know, so it'll it'll be interesting to see if you, if you can travel with that. Right. Because you know, as you know, some of it, some some of these venues are crazy. You know, yep. and it's the 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 ebb and flow of the game uh, on the road changes how you coach sometimes. Uh, you know, you get you get them, then of course you come back and you'll play Oklahoma State after that. 
Oklahoma State going into the year, I think a lot of people, maybe media-wise, didn't expect a lot out of them. And then they go beat Florida State away from home, and they hung with West Virginia all night in Stillwater. They're not going to be in, uh, they're not going to be an easy team in this league, but they're better, I think, than a lot of people like me thought they would have been. Well, yeah, I mean, the the one thing that they have is an NBA wing. So yeah, that's when true. You have a, when you have a professional wing player on your yeah. team, you always got a chance. I think you know they're defending at a at a better and more efficient clip. They're not giving up 10-0 runs and 15-0 runs by how they defend. They're being rock solid every defensive effort. And I think that's the biggest thing with them is uh, very good defensively and playing with no fear on offense. You know, I'm jumping all over the place. We talked some earlier about, you know, the big four, the core four, and what we need outside of them. Um, there's been like, there's been spurts from all the other guys. I thought at times, even yesterday, there was times when I thought Brian Patrick was good and times when I think Cartier was good and Ahmad. But as a coach, do you ever – I don't want to say you ever get closed-minded, but you ever decide at one point, hey, hey, these are our eight guys, or this is our rotation, or is that more of an NBA thing where they pick a rotation and stop? Or when in college, do they just keep evolving game by game? Uh, NBA, you could do that by because you know you have quarters. You right. know, you're going to have stoppage at a certain time and say, I'm going to play this guy the last two minutes first right. quarter. Or he knows he's going to get in at this point of the second quarter. Right. Uh, you know, with ours, and, you know, and they're professional too. So with us, we, we, we have a core group of our bench who we're going to play. Uh, but it also depends on if Dean's getting 34. Like, right. that's more dictated by the, the core four than it is by those guys off the bench. Because when they're playing well, it would be stupid for us to sit Dean right. during that stretch. Right. You know, we had to sit him a little bit. He was tired. But yep. to say, hey, you're going to get your three minutes that you normally get right here, can't do that. He's rolling or Cam. Yep. You know, Cam was, you know, 21. We had to play Cam 18, 19 minutes because those 18, 19 minutes were pretty magical of what he did. And you take him out, that's probably two or three threes that he didn't take. Right. And maybe another possession, empty possessions where somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to do. But I think you just ride the the really good like X didn't play well. So we said him. That's why right. Ahmad played more. Right. You know, that first half he was he struggled offensively and so we didn't play him. And then same thing in Washington State. He didn't first half he didn't he wasn't very good. Ahmad plays big big group of minutes and whenever it's it's, it's almost when Ahmad plays a lot. Yeah, we do well. So, but we can play versatile with him and, and play X, and we did that in the second half. Where she played X at the four, we did that. I would say played X at the four, Dean at the five. Yep, which allowed for more space for Dean to operate. And because of how physical West Virginia is, we couldn't really do that as much as we would like to. But we did it in the second half quite a bit more, and we got got the, the big fella in, in foul trouble, and that allowed us to play how we really right. wanted to play during that stretch. And X got off immediately. Boom. He gets yep. you know three or four threes during that segment. So playing small is something we want to do, but those guys got to be prepared to <laughs> to play against the style we, uh, we're going to play against, like West Virginia. You brought up one thing that made me think. I, I remember watching the Iowa State game. There was an instance where you guys did, I think it was Dean, where you did a good job if I remember right, where you sat him right before a TV timeout and then you got him that little extra break. Is that ever something? Is there somebody in your staff who's responsible for being aware of that and saying, oh, we're close to a TV timeout, so if we sit so-and-so, he gets a little bit longer break, that kind of thing? Or does it just happen by chance? No, uh, we, we do it. And it's, yeah. the one thing about it, we did it last night because we yeah. did it with Dean. Uh, we did the same thing because yeah. it's a longer TV timeout in the league. So yep. we, we got him some good rest. And, um, you know, that's the biggest thing. You know, yeah. I'm responsible for subbing. So we, we, we have to know kind of what's going on, right. well, who needs a rest and who doesn't, and what does foul trouble dictate. That sometimes, you know, we got to sit X early when he gets a foul because he, he's going to foul again. And, yeah. And the further be sitting with two, yep. you know, so, and Dean, Dean as well, he's one of those guys where if he gets a foul early, we'll take him out yeah. a lot early because, you know, we, we just feel those two are invaluable to a lot of the other stuff we do. Cam and Barry can play with two fouls. Right. They, they're, they're, they know how to do it, and they know how to, you know, really stay in games. Do you guys feel comfortable asking out of games, like with you guys, and then you know, they get put back? Oh in? yeah, that X does all yeah. the time because yep. he plays really hard. Dean does too, right? You know, those two really ask out a lot. Sometimes yeah. they'll come over the bench and lean over and not need one. Yep, uh, and and that's good because that shows you're not selfish. Yeah, you know, you could be playing well. Dean asked out three times at Iowa State. Yeah, two of them we said yes, and the last one was like, you ain't. <laughs> you're on fire, man. <laughs> no, when you're standing yeah. there. Yeah. So you know, it's one of those deals where you just gotta trust them and, and trust that they they played really hard, and I gotta come out. I'm just, I'm sorry. Sorry. So, uh, and that's what he did. Well, I think the last thing to ask about today, when, I know when we talk recruiting, we can never talk names and that kind of thing, but it's it, the message boards and the fan base, I think, are really encouraged by the names they see. Um, do, is, it, is it helpful to have a situation where these, these kids get to watch a pretty successful K State team right now, but also know that a lot of it is, you know, juniors and that kind of thing um, to where they could come? 
do they, you get a sense that it's a good combination of having a successful team right now, but also a roster that a guy from 2019 thinks he could come play in relatively early? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, and that's what we've sold with so many of those guys. And, um, you know, obviously getting a chance to see Sean Williams. We can talk about him as we signed him. Right. Yep. We saw him. You know, I saw him when the coach him versus yeah. cancer tournament, uh, you know, prior to, to the uh, West Virginia game. So, um, seeing him play and compete and, and play in a big-time tournament, sold out, standing room only, and uh, get 18-6 and 4, whatever he got in the championship game. Uh, that, that was that bodes well for us because there's so many other kids that we're recruiting right. from that area or at that game, too, right. walking around. So, you know, that's the, the beauty of when you recruit an area and all those other kids can see you and, you know, see you're yep. still visible and see it's not – you know, just you know, a one hit wonder with one of the guys. You, you're supportive of the whole area. Yeah, I'm glad you brought him up because he's a guy that you know, national guys from rivals and that kind of thing have started to really pick up on. He's been on some lists that have come out in the last two weeks about most underrated recruits in the country. I, I fell in the trap of looking at him and watching a little bit of video and thinking, oh, you know, Barry Brown, two guard combo guard, but he can be more of a, a true lead guard for you guys, yeah. couldn't he be? I mean, and he's big. You yeah, know, he's legit size. I think that's the biggest thing with him when you you don't know he's that tall. He's six three, legit. Right. Um, they're saying six four now, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not buying. He Sounds good though. <laughs> yeah, he, he's at least six two and a half, six three, um, and that's what you know. We need another guard that way. Yeah, to be a part of next year, because you need somebody to learn from the good guy, you know, right. From the older guys, and obviously Cardio being his his third year, but second year playing. Yep. And, and you envision those two guys being on the floor a lot in the future. Yep. So um, then along with X as a senior, you know, now you got a really, you got a veteran group again of guards. So, um, you know, he's had a great senior year. They got one loss, and that was to the state champ in Chicago. And he, yeah. that's when all those guys were like, oh, I didn't know he was that good. And so I think, you know, when you're recruiting, you're recruiting good players, um, you, you want guys who want to be in your place, but you also want guys who are good enough. And, right. And he's definitely that guy. All right. Hey, perfect. Hey, appreciate it, Coach. We'll talk again here probably next week. All right, thanks. Thank